Stefan Bauman's The Grand View is funded in part by Plein Air Magazine for people who love painting outdoors. PlenAirMagazine.com And by Masterpiece Canvas, makers of fine art canvases. We supply the canvas, you supply the vision. And by PaintingFromNature.com A website for artists seeking inspiration, advice, and knowledge to master painting from nature. PaintingFromNature.com Nearly 500 years ago, the Coast Miwok people of what is now known as Northern California witnessed a huge watercraft approaching the shores of their native land. Men in English regalia stepped from the 70-foot vessel. Their garb, skin tone, and hair different than anything the Coast Miwok people had ever seen. The tribe expressed reverence for the ship's captain, Francis Drake, ultimately honoring him and his men in tribal ceremony. A crown of feathers was placed upon Drake's head as members of the tribe wailed and scratched their faces. Anthropologists now realize that these native people had their own cultural context for the ceremony. They perceived Drake and his crew to be their ancestral gods, their own Coast Miwok elders returning from the dead. My name is Stefan Bauman and welcome to The Grand View. The story of Point Reyes is almost as old as America itself. In 1579, 41 years before the first pilgrim landed at Plymouth Rock, it is believed that Sir Francis Drake of England landed here on these shores. The story goes back even further than that because native people have made this their home for thousands of years. This place is home to thousands of species of plants and animals and it's also a great place for tourists and artists alike. So come along with me as we explore this beautiful and fascinating place called Point Reyes National Seashore. The biological diversity here is phenomenal. When you look at Point Reyes, we encompass 71,000 acres and Within that area, we have seen 45% of the species of birds found in all of North America. Now that's a phenomenal statistic that half of the species of birds, and that's like 470 species of birds, have been seen in this peninsula, which is just a small percentage of the state of California. Um, that unique geologic bedrock material of granite that we have also lends itself to the fact that we have over 900 species of flowering plants. That's about 18% of the flowering plant species found in all of California are found right here in this peninsula. We have different plant life here that's found nowhere else in Marin County. As far as the educational component to the myriad wildlife we have, we do a lot of um, ranger programs for the general public, predominantly on weekends, so we go out and talk about a lot of seasonal events, the migration of the Pacific gray whale, 
uh, the northern elephant seal when they come back to birth and have pups. And um, we have bird migrations that take place a couple of times a year. And then there's other constants that are here year round, like the tule elk, for example. They were reintroduced in 78, and now we have over 400 of them, so they're doing pretty well. And we actually, two years ago, reintroduced a small portion as an experimental herd into the wilderness area of the seashore, these 32,000 acres of wilderness. Currently, they're in a, a fenced-in peninsula. It's 2,600 acres, but they're in a fenced-in area at this point in time on the northernmost part of the park, which is designated as wilderness. And they truly ro are roaming free in the park at this point in time. As we predicted, though, scientifically, they haven't gone very far, no more than probably a mile or two from their initial release because it's preferred habitat. sitting on the San Andreas Fault right now. We are sitting on it. And that is a major fault zone in California. The San Andreas Fault is the one that shifted in 1906 and caused the destruction of San Francisco. We're at the epicenter right here where you're sitting of that earthquake of 1906. And if you walk along the earthquake trail, you can see the shift of 16 feet um, when that earthquake occurred. And everything on the west side of the fault is different from the east side. But there's a very different soil and vegetation, and to some extent, uh, wildlife from, from both sides of the fault. And Tamales Bay is the San Andreas Fault. It's called Earthquake Bay. And Tamales Bay is part of the national seashore. We just met earlier today with a, a foundation that uh, do an all species inventory. We know a lot about a few things. We know a lot about elephant seals or tule elk. We don't know much about the fungi. We don't know much about even the diseases that m might be uh, basic to, um, say, harbor seals. We had a couple die-offs of harbor seals a few years ago, but we didn't know what were the reference diseases that are just always with harbor seals. We found out they have brucellosis. They have herpes. So, but that, that shows you the detail we have to understand. If we just said, oh, that die-off, it's probably human-related. It wasn't. It wasn't human-related. It was a, a virus that uh, was newly described. We used to have the northernmost breeding colony of elephant seals that got established. The first pup was in 1981, and now there are about, this, this year we counted 400 and about 430 pups. It's just, it's wild. And they're, they're very dramatic. Everything about elephant seals is dramatic because they, they're big. The males are about 5,000 pounds and they, they raise up and they fight and they've got big noses that, and they, that use, they use for trumpeting and they have a big chest shield. They dive more than a mile deep when they feed. They fast for three months when they're on shore. Uh, they, they stay underwater for an hour and a half. It's just everything about them is, is really extraordinary. Preserving um, and understanding what, how the system works, because if we can understand, then we're in a better place to put it back together or to protect what we know is significant uh, for, for understanding how that system works. But we're all responsible. We may be park employees, and that's our, that's our mission in the Park Service, but we as a community have that same obligation to be stewards of this land. I want to be a mouthpiece for that, conveying that to the community or to, to students, that uh, this is your land, and this is for our future generations. <laughs> more or less people of the West, which was given to them by the Miwoks. And uh, many years, we call them years now because that's the word we use now. And it so happened that the Great Spirit, which is always, always represented by the eagle and uh, in our stories, he happened to be looking down around 
all over the universe. And they happened to spot this ball of blue, blue ball way in the Beyonce. So he says, I'm gonna go down there and, and, and investigate that, see what that looks, what it really is. And it so happened after he traveled quite a long time, there was a shower of meters, as we call today, and they knocked him for a loop. He was kind of groggy, and he figured, well, I better not take a chance and continue. So he says, I cannot go, so I'll pluck a feather. And he threw the feather, and he directed the feather straight to the, uh, this blue ball that was out in the beyond. And it, the feather traveled and traveled. Finally, it came down. And as you know, a feather will, the point of the feather will point down, which is the heavy part of the feather. And as it hit this blue material, whatever it was, it happened to be water as we know it now. And it, because the feather was spinning like this, it started the water to circle and circle, and it created a big uh, whirlpool. Meanwhile, it had caused all this foam. As you notice, if you ever stir the water, it will uh, be little bubbles. And as it started to slow down, slow down, these bubbles became hard. It finally stopped. And here this feather was laying there, which was a great spirit, on top of hard soil, which he had created by the feather doing what it did, spinning in the water. And that's how the earth was the soil that we know was created. There's so many beautiful places to paint here at Point Reyes, and one of the best places of all is the beach itself. I've chosen a beautiful composition with the beach and the ocean in the background. We're gonna have a little bit of water, mostly the, these wonderful dunes. So what I'm gonna do is very broadly place in a sketch. I'm going to paint these cliffs. As we progress with our sketch, it's a key point to also pay attention to the darks and lights. As the day progresses, the light's going to change a little, and I want to try to capture this morning light. Towards the afternoon when the sun is high, all these shadows are going to be gone. And I want to make little quick footnotes, and I do this in the sketch process to remind me of the lighting that's happening at this very moment. And I'm going to add more burnt sienna to my verticals just because I want them to have a nice brown undertone. I'm going to take a little bit of turpentine and actually pull off some of my sketch to get a little highlight. Also, it's important to realize that it is the gesture of the brush stroke that will count at the very end of the painting. If you bring a lot of energy into your sketch, that will play forth throughout the whole painting. Grab a paper towel and you can always wipe off areas where you want light. See, I'm thinking about the whole painting now. This is my, my main focal point in this area. I want to concentrate most of my lighting in the main focal point area. I'm also paying attention to angles. It's a 45 degree angle. So this is a straight angle that goes across with these rocks. And they have these wonderful little green highlights on the top of them. Also, we have to remember, too, it seems like this is high tide right now. So if the tide goes out, we could end up with a lot more beach. I like it the way it is right now. And at this point, too, you can experiment around. Because if you put a line in and you say you don't like it, you can take your brush and you can just easily take it out. I'm gonna start taking some white and some cadmium yellow and a little bit of lizard crimson. And that's gonna be pretty much it that I'm gonna use on my palette. I wanna mix up a gray for the sky. And I'm gonna very quickly get rid of my brown color that I have as my base with this bluish gray tone. And what's gonna happen is that these clouds in the distance will just pop up. So I'm painting around those clouds with light but it's important to realize that this stroke here 
is contrary to that big bold stroke. It's definitely a vertical stroke. Oftentimes when you're painting it, you can't just get something to pop off the canvas. Change the direction of your stroke. There's a little bit of blue peeking through the top of my sky. Now with my sky done, we're ready to start doing the background mountains. The background mountains, because of the atmosphere and the fog, are roughly about the same colors, except a little darker value. Nice vertical strokes and flick up to get the trees. I'm going to add a little bit more blue in some areas, and the blue will give the feeling that there's little canyons in the background mountain. Now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to my mountain color in the background and I'm going to put in the next hill here in the beginning of my cliffs. This again is this gray color of burnt sienna and cobalt blue and I've added a little bit of cad yellow to it. Okay, now with my green hill finished, I'm going to start actually working on the cliffs of the background hill. I'm going to mix yellow and red together with a little bit of white. This is going to be the highlights in the background cliffs. Just with a diagonal brush stroke, get the illusion of these cliffs. These cliffs actually, when Sir Francis Drake first laid eyes on them, reminded him of the great white cliffs of Dover in England. And that's one reason why it's believed that this is actually the beach where he landed. Okay, now with the background cliffs done, I'm going to start laying in the water. It's going to make a big difference for my, the rest of my sketch to have that water in. And it's going to go very quickly. Keep the paint very, very moist. I'm going to add a little bit of our gray color. This is the burnt sienna and cobalt blue. The background sky has a lot of clouds in it which will just gray down this, the water just a little bit. And I'm going to put in just some of the surf. This is just a little bit of white along the edge. And I'm dragging the white right back into the ocean. I want a little bit of water breaking along the beach here. And I can do that just with a few little brush strokes. Now with the water done, let's start working on the background cliffs. Now with very direct brush strokes. There's a little bit of green on the top of this cliff also. So let's take the opportunity to put that in. Instead of drawing with your brush, try to actually stroke with your brush. Okay, now let's start working on the main cliff area. This cliff area is going to be done a little bit different because I'm going to lay in a shadow site and a highlighted site. Now we want to do these brush strokes very quickly. We want to capture the light as we see it at this very moment. There's a lot of little, little lights that break away from the main light source and give a little pattern across the shadow. These are again little footnotes. I'm just going to lay in a base color and then I'll put in the shadow area. And while I have this color, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of gray to it. I'm going to lay in the base for my beach. Lots of turpentine, just let it flow very quickly here. I'm going to place a little bit more blue into my white, and I'm going to bring a little bit of reflection of the blue sky in my wet sand. And the beach comes up. So I'm just taking that same color, just dragging the beach back up onto my cliffs. Now I'm laying the dark for the top of my cliffs. This is the dark grass. It's a little cliff at the tip there, so we're going to put a little shadow underneath. And that shadow kind of goes along the base of the green. Okay, now I'm working slowly to my rocks out into the water. And remember, there's a nice green area up there. I want to preserve that. I'm going to work these highlights up into my cliff. But I really want to get to the end of my rocks and that wonderful light hitting the green. So I want to, to bring blue and yellow together, make a nice bright green, and let's bring that color out here. And I'm going to do vertical strokes and place in the shadow area of my rocks. 
By mixing a little bit of this cobalt blue and this burnt sienna together, we're going to create a dark wet sand area. I've added a little more white to the same color I'm using and it's giving me a nice sandy silvery color. And the wet sand should contrast a little bit to that blue that I put in for the reflection of the sky. I love painting reflections of sky on sand. It's a combination of the darks and the lights and the blues and the reflections that make this look like real shallow water. Now with the water done, we're going to start working on the foreground. So what we want to do is, in the foreground, get these broad strokes of darks. This is the base for my logs and for my ice plant in the foreground sand. And I'm also drawing it. There's a little clump of weeds that stick up from here. Short little strokes like this. See the power of a brush stroke? We're going to mix yellow and blue together and we're going to put the highlights on the grass. The way to get different variations of green is to go back and forth with a little more red, a little more yellow, or a little more blue. Notice how purposefully I'm moving my strokes. Almost every time I lay a brush stroke down, it's in a different angle or different direction. There's a little energy of some sand peeking through here just very quickly cut into your darks. See, I'm bringing these short strokes up like this. This is going to be the base for my ice plant. Let's put some ice plant in here. I've added a little bit more red because the ice plant has a little feeling of, of red leaves. Just laying the dark colors for our logs and try to get a lot of movement in these logs. Now with the base of these logs done, we're going to put the highlights in. We're going to mix white into our burnt sienna cobalt blue color, and we're going to make a light gray tone. Don't do a lot of detail, just enough to pull them out of the shadow. Just using the corner of my brush to get a few little broken branches. The colors of these ice plants are real bright. Bright yellows, bright greens. They're not indigenous to California, but they're sure beautiful. I'm just very quickly softening some of the edges before we start doing the flowers. And now we're gonna add a little bit of purple onto our palette. At this point, you could just go through your box and find some interesting color, because we're gonna start painting the flowers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to squeeze out some colors out of the tube. And these colors are gonna be like violets and thalo red rose and just put a few little flowers on top of these greens. There's some extreme yellow ones that go in. Beautiful, beautiful colors. When we started painting all of these ice plants were all closed up and now they've opened up for the sun. What a beautiful day at Point Reyes. I'm going to add a little bit more gray to this yellow color and we're going to put in some of these pebbles. Get the little rocks. And now with our flowers done, it's time to finish up our painting. We've had a beautiful day here at Point Reyes and unfortunately we'll have to go. But we'll first pick up our signature brush and sign the painting. Expanded instructional DVDs that feature an hour-long demonstration of today's painting and other paintings in the series are available at the Grandview by calling 1-800-511-1337.
Join us on our website, thegrandview.org, and get more information about our show. There you can download our free book, Everything You Need to Know About Outdoor Painting, along with a free diagram of today's subject. Stephen Bauman's The Grand View is funded in part by PaintingFromNature.com A website for artists seeking inspiration, advice, and knowledge to master painting from nature. PaintingFromNature.com And by Masterpiece Canvas Makers of fine art canvases We supply the canvas You supply the vision And by Plein Air Magazine, for people who love painting outdoors. PlenAirMagazine.com